Hey everyone! Now that you've recorded your script and have a voice recording in Explain Everything, and completed your visuals layout, it's time to overlay that voice recording with the visuals from your visual layout. This is where the strength of the screencasting program really comes through, because it allows you to present your content in engaging, interesting, and highly organized ways while closely coordinating what's appearing on the screen with what you're saying in your voice recording. It also allows you to do some simple animations, which my students tell me are really effective and are really not that hard to do. Okay, let's get to work. Okay, so to overlay your visuals over your recorded voice, you basically need three things. The first is what you're seeing here, and this is just your visuals layout, which at this point you should have already made, and this is just one page in Explain Everything. The second thing you'll need is your voice recording. And I usually put my voice recording on the next page in Explain Everything. So I have my visuals on one page and my voice recording on the next page. In this video, we'll finish up our discussion of plant reproduction. Okay, so that's my voice recording. Now, the third thing you'll need is a copy of your script with your production notes, because your production notes will tell you at what point in your voice recording various visuals should be appearing. So, of course, you can just have this open on your computer while you do this, but I have it copied into Explain Everything, and I'm going to copy that into the page with my voice recording on it, just so you can all follow along and see where my production notes are and how I do this. But like I said, this can just be open on your computer while you do this. Now in the interest of time, I'm just going to show you how I do this for part of my double fertilization video. And the part that I'm going to show you is basically the middle third of this video. So since it's the middle third, I'm going to place all the visuals that will have already appeared in this video onto this page. And I'll go ahead and bring the script to the front so you can all see it. So normally, your page with your voice recording on it will be blank to begin with because you'll be starting at the beginning and adding your visuals gradually. I'm going to start with some of my visuals already here because I'm showing you the middle part of this video and these are the visuals that will have already appeared by this point in the video. So essentially all you'll be doing is listening to your recording and following along on your script and when you get to a production note that tells you what visuals should be appearing at that point, you'll go back to your visuals page and copy whatever you want to appear from your visuals page and paste it right into the page with your voice recording. And in addition to copy and pasting things from the visuals page, you also might want to do some drawing, some live drawing when your voice recording is playing and make certain things appear or disappear. Pretty much everything that you can do with Explain Everything, you can make happen on the page at any point in your recording, and your production notes will tell you exactly what to do. Okay, so let's just get started going through the voice recording and the script, and part by part, I'll be adding each aspect of my visuals page that's not already there into my voice recording page. Okay, so let's start by hearing my voice recording. In this video, we'll finish up our discussion of plant reproduction. Okay, so we're starting right here in this video, we'll finish up our discussion of plant reproduction. So next is by examining, so on and so forth. So I'll just let this play. By examining double fertilization and seed development, we'll be addressing two questions. How does double fertilization occur? And 
What are the functions of the fertilized cells in seed development? Okay, so at this point I see a production note that tells me to write in these questions after saying them, and then speed up the, the appearance of those questions in post-production so they synchronize with my speech where I'm actually saying those questions. So I'm going to get to the end of these questions. So after I hear development, I'm going to pause the recording. Oh, and make sure that you don't mix up the play button and the record button. Also, you may want to make sure that your mute button is selected so you don't record any audio over your present audio recording. How does double fertilization occur? And what are the functions of the fertilized cells in seed development? Okay, so at this point in the recording, I am going to write in the words of these two questions. Now, mostly in this video, I'll be using the mix feature because I want whatever is happening on the screen to just overlay my voice recording. But in this instance, I'm actually going to insert a new recording into my present voice recording. And you'll see why I do that in post-production, but for now, I'm just going to insert me writing the words of these questions out at the top of the screen. So let's go ahead and do that. And I want to make sure I write in a straight line, so I'm going to bring up my guideline here, select some black texts, make sure that the point is right. Okay. And again, make sure that the mute button is selected if you do insert anything into your video, unless you want to insert you saying something. But here I don't. I just want to insert visuals only. I don't want to record any audio, so I have the mute button selected. Okay. Okay, so you can see in my timeline down here that if I go back in the timeline, you can see those words disappear. If I go forward, they reappear. So what I'm gonna do in post-production is take this whole region with me writing out the words, that whole region, speed that up, and then put it over the part of the recording where I'm actually saying these words. So you'll see me do that in one of the post-production videos, but for now, we'll just leave that like it is. Okay. And it looks like I left a bunch of blank space there, so I'll just go ahead and delete that, make things a little easier for myself in post-production. Okay, so then let's move on to the next part of the script. And the next part says the first step in double fertilization involves. The first step in double fertilization involves pollen 
being shed from the anther. Okay, so here after I say anther, I have a production note that says point, and it's just telling me to point to the anther. So I'm going to do that at that point in the video while recording, and I want that action of pointing to overlay my audio recording, so I'm going to select the mix recording mode, and that's pretty much what I'm gonna be using for the rest of this video. So I'm gonna go back, and when I hear the word anther, I'm just going to point to the anther and explain everything will record that act of pointing and incorporate it into the video. So I'm going to select my pointer, hit the record button. The first step in double fertilization involves pollen being shed from the anther and moving. Okay, and remember, make sure that that mute button is always selected when you're doing this because you don't wanna record any audio over the audio you already have. So let's take a look at what this looks like now. The first step in double fertilization involves pollen being shed from the anther and moving. Okay, so that looks fine. And after and moving, I have another production note that says copy and move the tiny yellow spot here representing the pollen to the stigma. Now I've already copied it and I've already brought that yellow spot to the front. And that's pretty important because if an object is behind other objects, it can be difficult to move. So make sure that you bring any object that you want to move while recording to the front. And just recall that you can do that by selecting an object, going to arrange and hitting bring to front. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in the recording a little bit and select my hand tool and move that pollen grain from the anther to the stigma when I actually say that in the recording. The first step in double fertilization involves pollen being shed from the anther and moving to the stigma. Okay, let's see what that looks like now. Being shed from the anther and moving to the stigma. All right, that looks pretty good. And I also see here that I have a production note telling me to point to the stigma, but upon some reflection, I don't really think I need to point to that because I do say it, and I think it's just pretty obvious that that's where the pollen grain is moving. So I'm just gonna ignore that production point for now. Okay, let's keep going in the recording. The pollen can be delivered by wind, insects, or in other ways. Here, pollen is deposited on the stigma of the same flower, but pollen from different flowers or from different plants can also make their way to the stigma. Once there, the pollen germinates. Okay, and you know, I feel I want to do a little more editing here. I feel like I don't really need this sentence. Here, pollen is deposited on the stigma of the same flower but pollen from different flowers or from different plants can also make their way to the stigma. That's true, but I feel like it's just a little bit beyond the scope of this video. So I'm just gonna delete that. And I just have to make sure that I'm gonna delete the right thing. So I want to delete the audio starting with here. The pollen can be delivered by wind, insects, or in other ways. Here. Okay, so where I say here is that little audio signal there. So I'm gonna remember what that looks like and I want to get to the point where I say can also make their way to the stigma. Can also make their way to the stigma. Okay, so I'm gonna delete that part of my recording because I just feel like I don't need it. Okay, so doing the overlay of your visuals onto or on top of your voice recording does afford you another opportunity to do some editing. Okay, so moving on. Once there, the pollen germinates. All right, and there's a bunch of empty space here. I'm just gonna delete that. I could also delete it in post-production. I'm just gonna do it here. 
Okay. Now, the next paragraph that begins, just as a seed germinates, I ended up deleting after I recorded it because I just felt it was a bit redundant. So the next thing in the recording starts with pollen germination involves. Pollen germination involves the growth of a pollen tube from the pollen grain down into the carpel. I'm to draw the pollen tube down into the carpel. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And I think I might, well, I don't think I'll need more time than is there to do that. So I'm going to select my pen option, make sure the yellow color is selected, and I'm just gonna draw, once this recording is going, the pollen tube down into the carpel. And I'm gonna hit record. Once again, make sure your mute button is selected and make sure that the mix option is selected. Pollen germination involves the growth of a pollen tube from the pollen grain down into the carpel. All right, let's see how that looks. Pollen germination involves the growth of a pollen tube from the pollen grain down into the carpel. Looks pretty good. Okay, let's keep listening. The pollen tube is directed toward the ovule by signal molecules released by the ovule itself and by other parts of the carpal. Okay, so I'm just going to bring up the script here so you can see it. Oh, and I'm actually going to have to do that while I'm recording if I want that change to be permanent. So I'm just going to insert some time here and do that. I'll just cut it out later. Okay. And I did that just to make sure that this change in the position of this script image here is, is permanent. So uh, don't worry too much about that. Just want to make sure that you can actually see the rest of the script. In fact, I'm going to move it up a little more. And whenever you move something, sometimes there's a little line that appears here, and that is sort of the default, and it makes whatever movement you did revert to what it looked like before. So I usually just delete that if I want that change in the position of whatever object I'm moving to be permanent. So I'm just gonna delete that. Okay, and then I'll bring this to the front. And there you go, now you can see it again. Okay, back to work. Where were we? The pollen tube is directed toward the ovule by signal molecules released by the ovule itself. Okay. Now, you may notice that uh, I underlined the word directed here. Sometimes I do that in my script just to remind myself to emphasize a certain word. So you may want to do that as well. Now, the next production note I have here is just to point to the ovule after I say the words ovule itself. So let's find those words. The pollen tube is directed toward the ovule by signal molecules released by the ovule itself and by other parts of the carpal. Okay. Now, I didn't leave myself much time here to point to the ovule itself. So I'm actually going to just insert some time between these two phrases. Now, I only recommend doing this if your level of background noise for your video is very, very low, and if you're doing background subtraction in post-production. If you're not doing those two things, I don't recommend inserting time into your recording because the levels of background noise for the original recording and the area of your recording that you're going to insert could be different, and that could be pretty noticeable in the final production. So I'm gonna do both those things, so I'm just gonna insert some empty space here. And once again, the purpose of that is just to allow myself some time to point to 
the ovule after I actually say ovule. So here I'm going to once again select the mix recording mode to make sure that whatever I do on the screen is being recorded over my audio recording. And I want my pointer since that's what I want to do and just to remind myself what I'm doing here I'm going to point to the ovule itself after I say the words ovule itself. Okay, so I'm going to hit record and do that. The pollen tube is directed toward the ovule by signal molecules released by the ovule itself. I actually forgot to do that, so let's try again. By signal molecules released by the ovule itself. Okay. And I can actually, um, you know, cut this out later in post-production. I'll cut out a little bit of it now, but I may want to leave some space in there later. So I'll just leave some of it. Okay. Let's keep going. And by Or actually, let's make sure that that looks good. Toward the ovule by signal molecules released by the ovule itself and by other parts of the carpal. Okay. So at this point, we are here as the pollen tube grows. As the pollen tube grows, the two sperm cells and the vegetative nucleus travel down it. Okay, so I have a production note here that says trace after the words travel down it, and that's just essentially telling me to point or trace along the pollen tube. So I'm going to do that. Select my pointer and hit record. As the pollen tube grows, the two sperm cells and the vegetative nucleus travel down it. Okay, let's see how that looks. And the vegetative nucleus travel down it. Okay, so where are we in our script? Let's see, right here, and eventually enter the egg sac. So I'm going to have to point to the egg sac at that point, so I might as well get ready to do that and hit record. And eventually enter the egg sac. Okay. And eventually enter the egg sac. All right. Now we're going to start with the word here. Here. All right. Now after that word, I see a production note, draw the pollen tube to the egg sac diagram. Okay. So I'm going to get ready to do that. And I'm essentially just drawing this pollen tube here, reaching the egg sac. And here I have a zoomed in diagram of the egg sac. So I just want to basically show a bigger version of this orangish yellow pollen tube reaching the egg sac. So I'm going to draw a bigger version of that tube, maybe that big. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'll be drawing that, just a line that thick, about here to about here reaching the egg sac after I say that. Okay, so make sure I've got my pen selected, the right color, the right size, and I'll hit record and get ready to draw my line from about here to the egg sac, that line once again representing the pollen tube growing toward the egg sac. Here is the pollen tube reaching the egg sac in our diagram. Okay, I think that looks good enough. Let's see how it looks. Here is the pollen tube reaching the egg sac in our diagram. Okay. Let's see where we are in our script right here. Okay, and I was supposed to point to the diagram when I said diagram, so I'm going to do that. Go back to about here select my pointer and I'm going to point to this diagram when I say the word diagram. Here is the pollen tube reaching the egg sac in our diagram. When okay. Now my script says when this occurs one of the synergid cells disappears. Okay so let's get to that point in the recording. When this occurs one of the synergid cells degenerates. Or rather degenerates, not disappears. So I want to get to the point where it says degenerates right there. 
degenerates. Okay, and then after I say that, what I want to happen on the screen is this synergid cell right here. It's not labeled, but um, I already talked about where those cells are in a previous video. So I'm assuming that the students know that these are the synergid cells. And even if they don't, they'll see which cell is degenerating. So at this point in the video, I want to make this disappear gradually. And the way that I do that, you can do this in a couple of ways, but the way that I do that is I erase parts of it very, very gradually. And so I'm going to make sure to select the eraser tool. And I only want to erase a little bit. So I'm going to hold my Apple Pencil pretty straight up and down and only erase a little bit, maybe a little thicker than that. Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. So at this point in my recording, I'm going to erase a little bit of this Synergid cell. Oh, that was a little more than I wanted. So, oh, unfortunately I can't undo uh, the erase tool. So I'm, I'm just gonna live with that mistake. I think it's not a big deal, uh, but I am gonna select a smaller point tool. So learn from that mistake. Uh, make sure that you're ready to erase something correctly before you actually do it. Okay, and I'll just erase just a little bit more. I know it's hard for you to see right now because I have to hold the Apple Pencil up and down, but just gonna erase a little bit more of the Synergid cell, okay? And then about a second after that, and you can see the erase icons show up here as I erase something on the screen, I'm just gonna erase a little more. Okay, and then maybe half a second after that, I'm going to erase the rest of it. So what you'll see is a gradual disappearance of the synergid cell. There it's full, a little bit disappears, a little more, and now it's gone. So that's one way you can make something disappear gradually. Let's see how it looks in real time. One of the synergid cells degenerates. Okay, and maybe I probably want to, I think, direct the student's attention to that cell just to make sure they know where to look so they can actually see it degenerating. So um, once again, I'm doing some you know, on-the-fly editing here, and that's completely okay if you think of this type of thing while you're doing this. So I want to point to that when I say Synergid cell. So let's see where in the recording I say that. When this occurs, one of the Synergid cells... So I think about right here. Synergid cell. Yep, right there. So I'm just going to point at that point to the Synergid cell. I'm going to back it up a little bit, select my pointer, and record. When this occurs, one of the Synergid cells degenerates. Okay, let's see how it looks now. One of the Synergid cells degenerates. Much better. Okay, moving on. The two sperm cells. Okay. Now at this point in the recording I have, or in my script, I have a production note, animate the two sperm cells with the vegetative nucleus moving through the pollen tube. So of course in order to animate them, I have to have them appear. So I'm actually gonna have them appear probably when I say the two sperm cells, and maybe I'll point to them when they appear as well, just to draw the student's attention to where I want it to be on the screen. The pointer is great for that. So let's see where I say two sperm cells. The two sperm cells, sperm cells. Okay, so I want all this to appear right when I say sperm cells. And I have the sperm cells already drawn out in my visuals layout. They're right here, okay? And 
I'm just going to copy them. There's one, there's another, and the vegetative nucleus. Actually, I'm just going to select all three and then deselect this pollen tube here. That's sometimes easier. And I'm going to, I'm going to group them because I want to move them together once I get to the next page and then I'll ungroup them. So I copy those, go to my recording page, paste them. Whoops, looks like I pasted the wrong thing there. That'll happen. I think I forgot to copy them. So highlight these, deselect that, copy. Okay, and paste. Okay, there they are. And I'm gonna select them now and maybe move them over here just for now and ungroup them. Okay, and I wanna make sure that I can move them each around individually. Ah, okay, so it looks like the filling of this circle and the circle are two separate objects. So I wanna make sure that I group those so I can move them together. So I'm gonna select my inspector tool, select those two objects and group them. Same thing for this one right here, group those and that's just one object. Okay, so here's one sperm cell. I'm gonna put that about right there, that one about right there, and the vegetative nucleus about right there. So when I say in the recording, then enter the egg sac, I'm going to animate them moving through the pollen tube and actually entering the egg sac. Okay. So I want to make sure they have enough time in the recording to do that. Let's see if I do. Then enter the egg sac. Okay, not very much time after I say then enter the egg sac. So I'm gonna once again insert more time for myself at this point, just to make sure I have plenty of time for these to move into the egg sac before I start speaking again. Because it's hard for the students to pay attention to what they're seeing on the screen if what you're saying is different than what they're seeing on the screen. Okay, so I'm just gonna insert some time here. And you know, you can do this before you actually start overlaying your visuals. You can do this in advance when you're actually recording your voice. You can put little notes in there saying, okay, leave some blank space so that I have time to animate this. I didn't do that in this case but that's okay, I can just insert the time now. Okay, and when I do this, I usually insert far more time than I think I need because I, it's just really easy to delete it later. Okay. So once again, the recording says this, and I'm gonna make sure to go back to the mix feature. Hit play. The two sperm cells, then enter the egg sac. Okay, so at this point, I want these to move, okay? Right after I say, then enter the egg sac. So I'm gonna make sure I have my hand tool selected. And also just gonna make sure that I can move these easily. Yep, can move that one. I can move that one. I can move that one, okay. Now I'm gonna move these one at a time so that eventually it's gonna look like they're all moving together. So I'm just gonna record and start moving that first sperm cell into the egg sac. The two sperm cells then enter the egg sac. Okay, now I'm going to move the second one and I want them to start moving at about the same time. So I just wanna make sure where they start moving right after I say egg sac. Egg sac. So I know when to start moving the second sperm cell as well. The two sperm cells then enter the egg sac. Okay, that went pretty well. Now I need to move the vegetative nucleus, not into the egg sac, but right about here is where it ends up. Then enter the egg sac. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's see what it actually looks like in the recording. 
the two sperm cells, then enter the egg sac. Now they didn't start moving at exactly the right time, but I'm okay with that. Okay, so now I'm just going to delete this extra space here. And move on with my recording. So I've animated them entering. And now I want the second egg sac diagram to appear. Okay, and the arrow with double fertilization. So that is everything right here. So I'm going to select at about this spot and also this text here and copy it. And paste it into my recording page because this is the point where I want this to appear right before I start speaking again. So let's see how that looks. Then enter the egg sac. The two okay. sperms. Now I see, I notice here that my sperm cells and my vegetative nucleus are not in this diagram. And I want them in that diagram because they're going to be involved in what I'm saying next. So you could say that that's a mistake, but I can easily fix it by going to the exact point where I copied this stuff. So it appears right there. Make sure I get to the point where it appears. There it is. And I'm just going to copy and paste these two sperm cells and this vegetative nucleus down into this diagram so that when this diagram appears, these two sperm cells and this vegetative nucleus will appear the same, at the same time, so it'll seem like they're just all appearing at once. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste those. I'm just going to copy this one and paste it twice because the two sperm cells are pretty much the same. And I'm going to put this one in about the same position in this diagram and this one in about the same position as well. And I'll copy the vegetative nucleus just so this diagram looks exactly like this one, at least to begin with. Okay, let's keep going. One haploid sperm cell enters the haploid egg cell. Okay, so at that point, I'm to animate this sperm cell going into this egg cell. So I'm going to do that, and it won't take long. I don't think I'll insert any time here. I think I'll be able to do it in a timely manner. So first, I'm just going to make sure I can actually drag this sperm cell around. Not that one. Don't really want to move that. Make sure I can drag this one. Nope. Okay, I'm going to send this one backwards to make sure that I can move the sperm cell that I want to move because I think this one's kind of blocking it. So arrange, send backwards. Let's see if that helps. Nope, let's send backwards a couple more times. There we go. Now I can move this one. Okay. Now I don't actually want to move it, so I'm going to undo that. And now I'm just going to let the recording play. And at the same time, I'm going to move that sperm cell into the egg cell. One haploid sperm cell enters the haploid egg cell. Okay, let's see how that looks. One haploid sperm cell enters the haploid egg cell. Okay, looks good, I think. and fuses with the egg cell nucleus, forming a diploid nucleus. Okay, so at this point, after and fuses with the egg cell nucleus, forming a diploid nucleus, I've just written a note to myself, basically telling me to show that. And I'm gonna show that by erasing these two things, the sperm cell and the nucleus, and replacing them with a diploid nucleus, or just a nucleus, which will then be shown as diploid. So you'll see what I mean. If you want to have 
something becomes something else on the screen, all you have to do is erase that thing and then replace it with what you want to appear next. So let me show you what I mean. Let me see where I want this to happen. And fuses with the... Okay. Fuses. Okay, so I want them to, as soon as I say fuses, I want essentially these two things to become one big blue circle, okay? And I want this N right here to go away as well. So I'm going to do that by erasing everything that I don't want to be on the screen anymore and replacing it with one, in this case, a nucleus, which is just essentially a big blue circle. So I'm going to do that. Okay, now let's see how that looks. And fuses with the egg cell nucleus forming a diploid nucleus. Okay, so when I say diploid in my script, I want to show that it's diploid. So to do that, when I say diploid, I'm just going to write 2n right in there. So where did I say diploid? Forming a diploid. Okay, that's where I say diploid. And I'm just going to write a 2n right in there. 2n to show that it's a diploid nucleus. So let's see how it all looks. One haploid sperm cell enters the haploid egg cell and fuses with the egg cell nucleus, forming a diploid nucleus. Okay. So the next thing my script says is that this cell is now a zygote and label that cell as a zygote. So the label right now says egg cell. So I basically just want to replace this label with a label that says zygote when I say the word zygote. Okay, so let's get to the word zygote. This diploid cell is now a zygote. I think it says it right about here. A zygote. Maybe here. A zygote. There we go. Right there is where I say zygote. Okay, so at that point, I essentially want this to turn into zygote, right? I want this egg cell phrase here to be replaced with the word zygote. So to do that, I'm just going to, at this point in the recording, when I want that to happen, erase that. And I believe that, nope, I didn't have that written in my visuals layout, so that's okay, I'll just write it in. I'll just write in zygote. And it's really up to you how much you want to rely on copy and pasting from your visuals layout versus just writing things as you want them to appear in your vocal recording. Some people like to just simply draw everything when they listen to their recording, right? They just listen to the recording and then on the fly, they just draw in the visuals as they think they fit in the visuals recording. I prefer to have everything planned out in advance, but it's really up to you. Okay, so let's see how this now looks. This diploid cell is now a zygote. Whoops, I was hiding it there, sorry. This diploid cell is now a zygote. Okay. It... That looks pretty good. What's next? I say it's this cell and I want to point to that cell that will produce the offspring plant. So, I'm going to point to that cell when I say that. It's this cell that will produce the offspring plant. Okay, then I'll say the second haploid sperm cell, and after that I want to have that second sperm cell move to the central cell. So that's this sperm cell here. Let me make sure that I can actually grab that. Yep, I can. So I don't actually want to move it, so I'm just going to undo that. And I'm going to move that sperm cell into the central cell. That's this cell here. When I mention that, in the script. The second haploid sperm cell enters the central cell and fuses with the diploid nucleus there. Okay, let's see how that looks. 
the second haploid sperm cell enters the central cell and fuses with the diploid nucleus there. Okay, so looking back at my script and fuses, after I say fuses, I want these two nuclei to fuse. And I'm going to do that just like I did before. When I say fuse, I'm going to erase them and replace them with the nuclei that replaces those two, essentially the nuclei that those two things fuse into. Okay, so let me find out where in the recording I say fuses. And fuses with the dip. Okay, I think it's right here. Fuses with the. Yep. Okay. So now I'm going to erase these two things. Whoops, not the whole thing, just that, that, and that. And you can see in my recording, those red icons there indicate that something has been deleted at that point in the timeline. Okay, and I'm gonna erase this as well. And I'm just gonna replace it with a bigger nuclei. That works. Okay, and in my script, I have the triploid nucleus appears, but I actually think I want to indicate that it's triploid when I actually say triploid down here. So let's see how it works. The second haploid sperm cell enters the central cell and fuses with the diploid nucleus there, forming a triploid. Okay, so when I say triploid, I think it's about right here. Triploid. Yeah, right there. That's when I want 3N to appear. So I am doing a little bit of editing on the fly here, which is okay. That's where I want 3N to appear. Let's see how that looks. Oh, and sometimes the icons in the visuals track take a little bit to show up, so don't worry if you don't see it there right away. It is there. Forming a triploid nucleus inside the central cell. Okay. So my last sentence says, so double fertilization produces two cells, a triploid central cell and a diploid zygote. All right, so I'm going to point to the central cell and the zygote in turn through that sentence. So I know that that's coming, so I'm just going to select my pointer, go up here, and hit record. So double fertilization produces two cells, a triploid central cell and a diploid zygote. Okay, let's see how that looks. A triploid central cell and a diploid zygote. Okay, now I've reached the end of my script here, but I do want to show you a few more things that I didn't happen to use in this particular video. One is the zoom feature, which can be very, very useful. So if you want to zoom in on an area, let's say I wanted to zoom in on this area down here a little more. What I like to do is, once again, I usually use the insert feature here. And if I want to insert a zoom somewhere, I'll go to where I want to zoom in on something and click the zoom tool. Remember, that's all the way at the lower left hand side of the screen and hit record. And this does take some practice. So you'll need to, you know, practice pinching in and out with this a few times probably before you do it and get it right. But while you're recording, you can zoom and the video will stay zoomed in. So let's do that. And I always have the mute button selected when I do this as well, because I don't want to record any audio. Okay. So let's see how that looks. Pretty good. And if you want to zoom out again while recording, you can simply hit the zoom button again twice and it will bring you to the original zoomed out view. So I've shown you how to use the hand tool, the draw tool, the erase tool, the zoom tool, the pointer tool, but you can use any of these tools while recording and a corresponding icon will appear on the visuals track. For example, one I commonly use, but I didn't use in this video, 
is the highlighter. So if I go back and maybe I wanted to highlight something as I mentioned it, let's see what I talked about over here. Forming a triploid nucleus. Okay, in so maybe in addition to 3N appearing there, I also wanted to highlight it. Okay, so at that point, let me zoom in so I get to the point where exactly my 3N is appearing. You can see it appears right there. At that point, maybe I want to highlight this as well. Maybe I want to highlight it in pinkish purple here. So I'm going to add the highlighter there as well, just to draw some extra attention to that area of the screen. So now let's see how that looks. And it doesn't really matter if you have the insert or mix feature selected for putting visuals over the audio. I usually just have the mix feature selected by default. But anyway, let's see how it looks. Forming a triploid nucleus inside the central cell. Okay, so there you go, the highlighter tool, also very, very useful to draw attention of the students to whatever you want them to pay attention to on the screen. So those are really the two main ways I use to direct the student's attention, both the pointer and the highlighter. Once you've finished adding all your visuals to your page with your voice recording on it, I suggest viewing the entire video again just to look for mistakes or stray marks that were made on the page. When you're going through the video, you can examine the pauses and using either the delete tool or the insert recording tool, you can make them shorter or longer. So you give your students enough time to absorb what they're hearing and what they're seeing on the page. Remember, the objective here is not to cram as much material as possible into as short a video as possible. It's to present the material in a way that the students will be able to understand and remember. Okay, so now that I've showed you how to overlay your visuals on top of your audio recording, do the same thing for your video. And once you've finished, view the entire video again, making sure to either shorten or lengthen any pauses that you have to make sure that your students have enough time to absorb what's going on in the screen and what you're saying. Now, in the next video, I'll show you how to do a talking head video, which is basically what I'm doing right now, just talking to the camera. And this is important because it gives you a chance to talk directly to your students. See you then.